Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. Do you think that the person who invented the elevator, like, they just kind of, like, thought about their throat, and they were like, oh, I can do this for people? No. That's how I think it went. I think somebody, like, swallowed, and they were like, I want to make that for buildings. Because wow. elevators are building throats. Mm, yes. Elevators are the throats of buildings, but at the, ele- well, I mean, elevator shafts are, but the elevator itself, like, you're... The you're- elevator's the food. No. <laughs> the shaft is the throat. I don't the like anything the about food. this. Why? Because it doesn't work. But it is. It's a one-to-one parallel. No. Yes, it is. No. A throat is a shaft. Correct. And the food is the elevator. No, it's not because it's not going up and down on a fucking system of pulleys. On a base level, you... <laughs> I don't like it. Why? I'm against this metaphor. Why? You're... You never like my ideas about how things are invented. Like I when love I, your ideas. When I talk about how like somebody looked at the floor and they were like, I need the floor up here. And that's how the table was invented. You're like, actually, the table was invented. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no. It's because someone needed the floor to be more convenient to where their height was. Radically unfair. I love that joke. I think it's a great fucking joke. And I've never given you a hard time about it. I'm trying to make elevators... You're trying, you're setting me up to be anti your you set ideas. Yourself up. No way, man. I just worked a 17 hour day. We should talk about that. Yeah. Really quick. Hello, Mary Jane. Hi. What up, Mary Jane? Hi, Mike. I'm so glad that you're able to record with me after a 17 hour day. It was a crazy long day, so I'm really stoked to sit down with you right now and decompress before I face plant and become unconscious. Okay, bet. Well, welcome to Weed and Grub, everybody. Uh, this is a wrinkle in time episode. <laughs> Usually it's about cannabis, comedy, culture. Cooking. Calling shit out, cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, we were supposed to have a big, beautiful guest for this week, but everything kind of went haywire last minute. And they exploded. They did explode, and <laughs> I don't know. You know, if you if you know who it is, like, don't spoil it. But um, if you don't know, who, it's Wiley Coyote. We're gonna have Wiley Coyote on. Um, it was gonna be really cool. He was gonna run through the wall and then sit down with us. Um, but uh, Anvil fell on his head, and he's in a hospital for looking like an accordion right now. So <laughs> hopefully we'll get him back soon. Um, but because we didn't, um, because we don't have a guest this week, but we needed to drop a hot ep, yeah. uh, we're recording at zero hour yep. after a 17-hour day. Yep. So that's how this is, everyone. It's a late night loose moose. <laughs> <laughs> so you were doing 17 hours with Coldplay? I was doing 17 hours with Live Nation, who uh, are producing a concert series, the first of which was Coldplay. Tonight was, um, yeah, a cool small concert series. And it was Coldplay, and then t- there's three more concerts, Brittany Howard, Brandy Carlisle, and the Jonas Brothers. Holy shit. I know. It's a sick lineup. I know. Fuck, that's cool. So excited to see Brandy Carlisle and Brittany Howard. I feel like, for me, Coldplay is the kind of band that is easily dismissed, mm. usually made fun of. Yep. All I can think about is like Yellow and Super Bowls yep. and Selling Out and Pepsi. Okay. But I feel like if I saw them in concert, it would completely change my fucking tune. Okay, can I kind of set the scene for you a little bit? Please. So Coldplay is the... I saw them at a free concert, which is honestly at the time the only way I would ever have gone to a Coldplay concert, uh, probably 10 years ago at Madison Square Garden. And they blew my fucking mind. It was the first time I'd ever seen that confetti thing where they just fill the entire arena. I'd never seen that confetti explosion kind of thing before. And they were all butterflies. And then they turned off the lights and it was black light. And this whole Madison Square Garden was full of ultraviolet, ultraviolet confetti butterflies. And I was tripping. It blew my fucking mind. Um, that was beautiful. I don't remember the music at all. <laughs> I just remember that. And their outfits were really cool. So I was like, they put on a great show. Tonight, it was this very small, the Hollywood Palladium, which is about, it's like, at its capacity, it's about 3,000 people. It was packed. And they played this really sort of small concert for this cool, intimate venue with an amazing backing lineup of, like, 
um, soul singers and like they brought all kinds of musicians on they stage see, like, and like a bunch of different drummers and a bunch yeah. of different like brass and it was fucking beautiful. And at one point, I swear to God, I was like. I'm just going to go and kind of stand in the crowd and listen to a couple of songs. And I've never been a big fan. Of course, I know all the hits. And like, yes, you know, your heart kind of beats faster when you hear them because you know them. They're anthony and they, I, I've you know. seen them in Apple commercials. So yeah. I immediately want to purchase items. They know yeah. how to write things to Fuck get, yeah. you know, get, like get you kind of humming along and stuff. But I've never been moved by any of their music. And tonight there was this song. Chris Martin was just playing the piano and singing this very beautiful kind of like, I feel like he might have written it for one of his kids. And it was, um, he kept repeating, I can't even remember what the, I'm so fried right now, I can't remember what the song was called or what, what the refrain was, but it was about a kid looking for their daddy. And um, the animation that played throughout the song was this beautiful kid's journey to the bottom of the sea where it found the kid found a whale and then rode on a whale up to the moon. And it sounds so sappy, and it was, and I fucking cried, and it made me think of my dad, and it was beautiful. And I felt surrounded by a lot of people who were having the same experience, and that was beautiful. And then they played another song that was equally moving, and I was like, yeah, I fucking get it. And then after the show, everyone came out singing together. They got everyone to put away their phones for um, that, you know, I can't sing anything right now, but they have like a big hit where they were like, everyone just sing together. We're going to sing it together. Everyone put away your phones. And then after that, everyone poured out into the streets and they were singing on the corner of a street, which in LA I've never seen. I used to see that happen in New York all the time, like impromptu concerts would happen, you know? But in LA, I feel like the city doesn't really come together in that way. And there was like a drum circle with a guitar and they were singing yellow. And honestly, it was Fucking beautiful. So say what you will about, you know, their commercial success and their, yeah. you know, easy listening kind of anthem songs or whatever. But it was a fucking great night and they're really fucking great live. And also they won't tour right now because they don't like how um, festivals and concerts are affecting the earth and climate change. Whole, so many things. And everything, all of the stuff at the venue, all of the cups, all of the way, everything was um, recyclable and sustainable as much as it could be for that kind of concert. Yeah. Yeah. Holy fuck, Coldplay. <laughs> okay, cool. Chris Martin. So They won't tour because of sustainability? So, yeah, right now they're really against going on tour because of how that affects the planet, you know? There's so much waste if you go to any concert, like the fucking tr- tons of trash that that kind of thing, kind of event generates, and, you know, then... Catering, t- plastic straws, uh, crew meal, meal, like food for... People the, who are just there. Just the fucking plastic cups and the trash. Fucking and the, your lanyards cups. and laminates and wristbands and, yeah. you know, just like people getting together in large numbers causes a lot of fucking trash. And so I guess they are really um, trying to reduce their footprint. And so they put out a new album and they're like, we're not going to tour right now. We're, we're not sure how to do this. So, but here's our new music and we'll see what happens. Wild. I have never even thought about the idea of like just a fucking private jet for... Yeah. The band and the family and the hotel and the gas and the drive and the navigator that gets them everywhere. Like yeah. the whole thing is such a fucking footprint. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you know, when we go to Life is Beautiful and we just see, you know, like how amazing it is, but also like the incredible amount of stuff that that generates. Yeah. And there's a group called Clean Vibes that is a really cool group that's brought in by a lot of festivals now that, you know, just tries to reduce the impact of those. But there's there's not that much you can do really when, you know, people want to buy stuff and they want to you know, drink their drink and then throw that cup away. And I don't know, it's, it's pretty hard to figure out how to reduce the impact of. I wish they could make like thick bubbles or something. Like I would love like a thick bubble invention so that when you're done using it, you can just pop it. Well, they make water like that now. Really? In in pods. I just saw like like, a Facebook video about it. And they're also making straws out of pasta. Have you seen those pasta straws? Well, I was going to say yes, but no. <laughs> well, like, because I was thinking about how I used to eat, like, red vines with a Dr. Pepper. Mm-hmm. And you bite both sides of the red vine and slurp up the DP. Ooh. Yeah. Double penetration soda. Okay. Yeah. I All love right. It's the number one soda. DP? Yeah. Of course. Nice. Yeah. So, um, but I've never seen a pasta straw. It's a, it's all the rage, evidently. I don't it's really a, know much about it other than I've seen it on some Facebook feeds lately. All right. Yeah. Nothing's going to catch on. We're all going to burn, but it's going to be a fun time while we go down. Well, I mean, why not use a fucking pasta straw and, you know, don't buy When do you don't need buy... a straw? All the time. Agreed. Never mind. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was, here I am. <laughs> I will never, like... <laughs> I always, always want a straw. And I didn't grow up with... Uh, 
a whole lot of like I didn't drink soda or anything so I don't know where like I have this like affinity for like a need for straws maybe an oral fixation oh, especially yeah. right now because I'm like you know sober so day, I don't have day any, 17 or so day 20 day 20 yeah. woke you're around the bend yep on whole 30 worked a 17 hour day on my day 20 fucking congrats feeling good well, I want to look up water bubbles. Yep. And I want to look up pasta straws. Yep. And maybe there is some hope because things like that do make a really big difference. Yeah, I know. I don't know why you say there isn't any hope. That really bums me out when you say that. Like, we're all going to burn. That actually makes me angry. It does? Yeah, it pisses me off. I, it's how I feel, but I think it's more important to say a, something positive well, you know because it doesn't f- help. Like, saying that shit doesn't it's help, a, but it's how I feel. It's fucking bullshit, and it's an excuse to behave badly Ooh. in my fucking book. Like, if you just think, like, oh, yeah, the world is going to burn, or nothing's going to matter, no matter how I fucking vote, or, you know, like, yeah, just the fa- face that you just like made, this, like, it like, makes uh, me want to punch things, because it's like, you should fucking care. And if you don't care, then I don't I don't know what's wrong with you, but you should care about the world, and you should care about voting, and you should care about, you know, all of your friends, and all of the people who are young and still have a long life ahead of them, and just making the world a better place for all of the people that you love. Like, why not care? What the fuck is wrong with you? 100%. <laughs> you know, cry yeah. to a Coldplay song and think about how you can make things better instead of saying the world's going to burn. Show Jesus. title. Show title. <laughs> I don't know. Show it just title. makes me mad. It's, yeah. It really does. I hate that. It makes me mad and sad, and I that's a bad combo. So, Danger. Yeah. I mean, mad and sad is nobody wants that. <laughs> it's the worst well to be in. Yeah. Damn right. Yeah. yeah. And then just like a bucket of hate is dropped down to you, for well, you can slurp on that for a minute. For me, it turns into despair, which is, you know, that really is despair. Like anger and sadness together. It's like there's there's no coming back from that. It often feels like you know yeah that's the bottomless well and i never want to go there um so i choose not to fuck yes if i can fuck yes yeah um go look at a whale you know i've never seen a whale like go look at a whale or go to an aquarium or do anything look at a flower just something that's not the internet or the news or your own fucking face you know what i mean like that's what i need to do i'm not saying to you that that's what you should do i'm saying like i get it in general yeah, I get it. You know, it is wild to think about how there is just a whale out there cruising around right now. Yeah. There's like an octopus, probably just changed color and latched onto a new rock mm-hmm. right fucking now. Yeah, like oh, that's such a trip. I, a smoking horse. weed, smoking weed, and thinking about everything that's happening that I never think about is yeah. one of my favorite pastimes. Have you ever seen a flamboyant cuttlefish? <laughs> Have you ever seen a seahorse giving birth? I have seen that. I have never seen a flamboyant cuttlefish, though. No, you have. You saw them with me. What is it? Uh, They're they look like Liberace, but they're cuttlefish. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, with the tiny scarf and the piano and the sunglasses. Exactly. Yeah, having sex with somebody that looks exactly like them through plastic surgery. Yes. Yes. Exactly. (laughs) I I do remember a cuttlefish because it's like a it's like a. It's it's squidish. Well, they're cephalopods. Yeah. Yeah, man, smoking weed and going to the aquarium, like fuck a zoo. Yeah. But sign me up for an aquarium. Fish prison. I know. That's what Michelle from Thug Kitchen called it. Yeah. Do you want to hear some news? Yes. Okay. Let's get to some Grubla Gazette. Okay. This should be. This is. A, this is a wild. Weed is in a wild, wild time. I hate the term wild, wild west when everyone's like, oh, it's like the wild west out there. Like, no, it's not. But yo. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Holy shit. Yeah, things are crazy. Things are crazy. If you don't know what Ease is, Ease is like weed Postmates, essentially. And then there is an article that just came out on TechCrunch.com that says marijuana delivery giant Ease may go up in smoke. Here's what TechCrunch has to say. Okay. Ease is... They started back by like $166 million, and they were the Uber of pot. Mm -hmm. Then they closed a $15 million bridge round. I don't, I'm not going to, disclaimer real quick, I don't know what the fuck a bridge round is. I don't know what a Series D is. I don't know what $15 million looks like, let alone feels like, let alone how far that actually goes. So as I read this and give opinions that are my own, they're my own. Right. I can't believe you didn't make a dick joke with Series D. But anyway. Fuck! <laughs> fuck! <laughs> fuck! I, I know what a Series D is, Mike. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> uh, mm. <sighs> so, as of right now, they're currently trying to raise $35 million in a Series D round. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Basically, they're tanking and they need more money. And the reason they're tanking is that their margins are all fucked up because let's say they make a million dollars in a day. Mm -hmm. That million dollars doesn't go to them. It goes to the people who make the products that the people are ordering plus pay. Like it goes everywhere except to them. Plus they need marketing. So a million dollars a day ain't shit. Right. And the margins are so thin that like you're losing more than you're making, even though you're making a million. And the very little that I do know about margins, I've learned from watching Shark Tank, which you turned me on to. And they're always like, "Mm, those margins are terrible. And I'm like, oh, yeah, your margins, mm, they seem very uh, not big enough. Yeah. Not good enough. And also I wouldn't give away any equity. It seems like you keep giving away equity. uh, You're going to be chum. No. Mr. Wonderful is, uh, yeah, he's going to take you for everything you're worth. Go with Lori always. She seems like a good egg. I think so. You know? Yeah. I, I just like the women. I really do. I think Barbara Corcoran's got like kind of great. I think Lori's great. Barbara Corcoran's story is fascinating. Yeah. her The way that she was in, I'll have to wiki eat to understand it, but there was something about her and her husband. Yeah. And then her husband was like, fuck you. And she's like, fuck you. And then she became like even bigger than her husband in the real estate yeah. game. I think he might have left for another woman. It doesn't fucking matter. But anyway. Yeah. Barbara yeah. and Lori, they are the good ones. I mean, I don't know. And the dude. Who's the dude who loves cars and he's always on the end? Robert. Oh, yeah. I like Robert. He's a good dude. He seems really nice. He, yeah, he has a cool story. I think they're all probably great. I just naturally, my affinity is for the like the two women who are most often on the panel. So I think it's because for me, they take Lori... chances on like weird things. Hell that yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Lori's like, oh, you made a thing that, you know, blow dries your hair and cooks your baby food at the same time. <laughs> I know how to sell that. <laughs> She's like Little Mermaid. She's like, I got oozits and what's it's a plenty. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, she isn't she sort of affiliated with like QVC? She's the QVC queen. Yeah, totally. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like her. I have just, a I have a barbecue yeah. sauce that doubles as a spare tire. Like, yeah, but also she's a fucking shark. Yeah, she is. So cool. She's the truth. All right. Well, your margins are terrible. Whatever. Yeah. So Ease, Ease is tanking, and they're trying to raise a bunch more money. And it's just another story about another company that you think is on top. So here's what they're doing. Okay. They're trying to pivot and be like, we're not going to work with any new companies. We're not, we're, we're going to touch the plant, as they like to say. Are they going to do CBDs? <laughs> hey, uh... CBDs nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you mean they're going to touch the plant? That's, what? Uh, you know. Like uh, in, a, in a creepy way? <laughs> I'm going to touch that plant. Wait, no. What do you mean, though? Basically, they want to, like, only have sell their own products so that all the money goes to them. They want to create verticals? Yes. Is that what a vertical is? Ooh. Okay, Shark Tank. (laughs) What if we did Shark Tank and it was called Dank Tank? Um, How good would that be? I don't know. It sounds bad because we would, everyone's losing money. Yeah. But I like the idea of someone coming to us and being like, "Um, it's, it's an apple, but it grows already it's in pipe form. Like we've created the genetic code that it's already a pipe. Oh, dope. Yeah, right? Yeah, I would totally. You know what I would be great at? The presentation. I would be really good. I feel like you and I would do a really amazing presentation, but then they would start asking questions and I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know what a margin is. I don't understand equity. I don't, don't look at me. Shut up, Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> We like her. She's got gusto. Mark Cuban would be like, get her out of here. She's fucking, no. No, I think that they would be like, we love your idea. We find you to be a nightmare. We will give you a million dollars to never talk to us again, and we will make a billion with it. Please go away. Please. (laughs) So that's what's up with Ease. They're going to try and, you know, pivot a bit and keep things going, but everyone's trying to pivot because everything's fucking hell in a handbasket. Everyone's trying to pivot. A whole lot of CBD nonsense happening that I do want to dig into when I'm not feeling like I might pass out any second. But it's like, yeah, there's a lot of fuckery happening. There's a lot of like madness happening with taxation and regulation in states like California and Illinois that's like squeezing people out of um, legal weed biz and forcing them back onto the legacy market, if that's what you choose to call it. The legacy market is how I'm enjoying it. I like that quite a bit more. I do too. There are so many ways to refer to the underground market, the illicit market, the legacy market, instead of calling it the black market, which has you know negative connotations. Yo, which speaking of, I have another secret story for Ooh, you. Okay. Wow. What? You might be tired, but you still are psychic. I have tiger blood. Blood, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> see these nuts? <laughs> Did you see that the other day? I don't know. 
where I, I think it was on Instagram. I really am punchy right now. Forgive me for digressing. But there was a get off these titties and suck on these nuts graphic that I saw. Mm-mm. Then the, it, it was like the little graphic was get off of these titties. And it was a cow udder and suck on these nuts. And it was some almonds. <laughs> <laughs> and that tickled you? It just made me laugh. <laughs> It really is the little thing. It's just so silly. It was just like a tiny little thing that was just so dirty. And I was like, hee hee. <laughs> <laughs> you have your Instagram on like PG-13 mode. So no, oh. there's no OnlyFans. There's nothing. It's just like like wordplay. Kind of slightly racy jokes. <laughs> but nothing too, you know, I don't want to go too far. It's great. Like you have a very pleasant algorithm. Like if yeah. they dig deep into you, it's, it's like a... It's like just rolling hills and oh. beautiful cumulus clouds of an algorithm. I watched a thing today. I think I watched it five times. It was an Australian shepherd dog tobogganing. Amazing. Yeah. And you just kept pulling back up the hill and then getting on it and riding it down. I watched it so many times, you know. I love that. Yeah. That's It is the little things. It's, it is the little things. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Sorry to interrupt you. Please. <laughs> Return to regularly scheduled programming. Let's. I like the idea that, like, if we don't stay on track, either of us would be like, what are you doing? We're always on track. Oh, my God. You're just giving me, like, weird laser eyes across the microphone. Like, yeah. (laughs) So here's what happened. Okay. Um, In Vancouver, there is a uh, trade show called Lift & Co. And one of the booths was bought by a brand new company called Black Market. Whoa. B-L-K-M-K-T. Oh, no. And its slogan was, once you go black, dot, dot, dot. And so everybody took a fucking picture of it, including Lift & Co., and tweeted it out and was like, look at this slogan, once you go black, da, 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 da. And the world came for them and was like, how fucking dare you? How tone deaf are you? Go fuck yourself. Seriously, what the fuck? This is obviously like, I don't even know what to say about this is obviously what this is obviously someone who I mean, I think they know exactly what they're doing. and They're trying to be provocative with their messaging, but they're just, yeah, stirring the fucking wrong pot. Okay, so the big thing is that that everyone was like, you're using um, black market, you're using a slang term for black men and having sex with them. Mm -hmm. You're using cannabis, which most black men are in fucking jail for above all like everything about it is so inappropriate and appropriated or not most black men are in jail for it but the majority of people who serve prison sentences for cannabis are in prison yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what i'm saying yeah right yeah i'm not saying all black men are in jail no i know okay i just need but i appreciate sorry i just my brain farted and i was like i just need to say that i appreciate it thank you because you knew what i was saying but Mm -hmm. i said their words in a way that wasn't what i was saying right and so, yo, it's it's another fucking moment of like, thank you, Internet, for coming to the rescue. And like, I love when everyone comes together as heroes in a teachable moment where it's like, we will not stand for this. Because I think the outlook for me that I have started with was like, fuck these people and fuck all these people coming in. And it's like, no, 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 there's fuckeries all over the place. Mm-hmm. It's it's wonderful that we as a community can come together and stand for something and be like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. None of this is okay, and you will not be able to make it because it's not okay. Yeah. And I love the empowerment of that. And that's, that's great. It is fucking great. And that's not canceling. That's actually just holding someone accountable and saying, this is this is not uh, acceptable, which is very different than saying, you know, haha, caught you doing something that, you know, is, is potentially damaging to you, and we're going to, you know, like hoist you up high and publicly shame you for that. This is actually like, no, this is not okay. This is racist, and this is like seriously fucking troubling messaging from a company that's trying to make a profit off of pot. Yes. Fuck you. You can't do this. Exactly. Huh. Boom, boom. Interesting. So that's where we're at. All right. Yeah. People are coming for people for all the right reasons. Yeah, people are fiery and feisty. It's, yeah. I, well, look, January has been going on for four months. Uh-huh. So, you know, as it is, that's just how I feel. I've been sober for one million years. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I don't know, man. That's what people say. And I'm like, I don't know. It's great. I'm, I'm really excited to like smoke a joint with you and have some cake. Mm, you know cake on cake on cake smoke some wedding cake and eat a piece of cake yo shout out to the dm we got yeah totally yep yeah wedding cake on wedding cake yeah can we listen to the song pound cake while we do it what's the song pound cake oh it's so good there's a really good freestyle by donald glover to pound cake oh Oh. it's it's one of the best 
cast. He's such a good, he's an alien, right? He, he might be an alien. Donald Glover's a fucking alien. Yeah, he might be a fucking His alien. His freestyle to pound cake is some of the best, oh my God. I have to just call out that it was um, Zobel97 who gave us the- uh, What'd she say? Uh, <laughs> Zobel97 said, I want cake so badly right now, smoking a bowl, listening to the lobster mini sode. I really want y'all to talk about that when it happens. I'm so happy for you, MJ. Look at you killing it. I'm trying to eat better and work out every day, and I just keep thinking about wedding cake. How dope would it be to have an infused wedding cake? Love y'all. And then we were like, oh my God, have you tried wedding cake, the strain wedding cake? And Zobel said, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I believe yeah, it. Yeah, no, I have. <laughs> Fucking, you're behind on everything. Catch up. You're killing it. I'm not killing anything. A, um, an infused wedding cake sounds delicious. What would your... I I feel like, strangely, I wouldn't normally go lemon, but I feel like lemon curd in a wedding cake might be a really positive choice. Are you getting married? I don't think I will. Okay, but then. But it's fun. Uh, but a wedding cake is... So fun to go wedding cake shopping with a pal okay. and try all the varieties that the wedding cake maker. I almost said it's a cake. It's a wedding cake bake baker. Wedding ba- cake baker maker. Baker maker. <laughs> the wedding cake baker maker maker. Oh, that's like the um, salami punani the butcher hooker. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, what was that? Just some like brain rambling thing that we had when we were walking around in circles thinking up ideas. And I was like, there's this, you know, I just thought Salami Punani would be a funny name for a stripper um, who was also a butcher and then maybe also a sex worker. And then it was like Salami Punani the butcher. I don't even know. Salami Punani. (laughs) Well, like a wedding cake baker maker and going and tasting all of the cakes that Mm, they make mm -hmm. is so much fun. And I always find myself leaning in on a like vanilla cake with a lemon curd middle. It's very elegant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's light. It's refreshing. I can keep partying all night with it. Yeah. I don't want to like heavy dense chocolate necessarily, mm. but I I mean, I'll eat it. I'm not a monster, but like, yeah, I feel like a lemon curd is the wedding flavor for me. I feel like the best wedding cakes that I've had are like those really light, fluffy kind of angel foody lemon curdy. Yeah, the light ones, even though I always want like a German chocolate cake or I like a red velvet or a carrot cake. I kind of like the heavy dense stuff, but... You know, I'm just like, I want a lot of frosting and that's not maybe right when you're wearing a fancy dress and you're feeling, you know, Would you fancy. smash face? No. I would, I don't trust, I don't trust a couple who does it. Who does it? Yeah. Who or does, does a, not do it. Who does a, a smash face? Yeah. I think it's like restrained violence. that's just a harbinger of bad things to come. Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, like oh, it's been <laughs> such a fucking good couple of months planning this fucking wedding. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know yeah maybe they just love each other so much if they have that kind of fun playful relationship but usually i've only seen online the clip of the dude just smashing it in her face and yeah. then his boys being like boo, 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 boo. yeah you show her mm-hmm. i'll never forget one of and the, the f- candle is still in there it oh. goes right into her eye oh no yeah oh, and then no. her brain catches fire from the inside out yikes yep so uncomfortable. It's on what? America's Funniest Home Videos won ten thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, what an end it was of the called night. Um, brain melt <laughs> instead of brain freeze. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, will never forget one of the very first weddings I ever went to, um, where they were coming out of the church, just married, and he stepped on her dress and she hit him. <gasps> It was like the first thing that happened when they walked out of the church. And, you know, she was wearing this incredible satin gown that was, you know, a million miles long with the train and stuff. And he was clumsy and he's not used to being next to her. Probably nervous as fuck. Yeah. Super nervous. And there was like this big thing in the way. And he stepped on it and she smacked him and gave him this look. And I was like, okay. Well, Mm -hmm. (laughs) good luck, guys. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel bad because I always catch couples in that moment that makes their first impression on me like oh that's not gonna last yeah but then it's none of my business and who am i to judge but i saw this couple the other day where they um he held the door open for her and then he what did he do and well she was on her phone and just walked in and he goes you're welcome (gasps) and i was like 
oh damn oh, like no. you, y'all sure you want to be in this subway you don't want to like work something out in the car before you come in here you know like whatever it was and everybody has sure? bad days wait are you sure they were a couple or were they just two people who didn't know each other oh they were a couple a hundred percent yeah you because, saw them bone yeah i did <laughs> in the subway it not in the subway in their camaro you followed them Yes. Okay. They had makeup sex. And so maybe they get in a fight in Subway because it gets them hot and heavy. And then they're like, look, that guy's watching. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then like double foot longs, you know, one wow. down, one later. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wedding, like, oh man, I love, I like, I don't know. Weddings are a trip. Yeah. You just shifted your whole weight in that chair. It makes me so nervous. Wow. It really does. I just, I don't know. It. It's always seemed like I have so many friends who have been divorced and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But I also have so many friends who are just so fucking happy in their marriage. Like it is a straight 50-50 split and both things seem absolutely right for those people. Mm. And so it's just like, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. I can't wrap my head around it. I think you know when you know. That's what everyone says. Yeah. yeah. But haven't you ever like thought like oh i'll never feel that way and then had a new feeling and been like oh that's what they're all talking about i was in my first love in college was a girl named terry wild and i'm saying her name because i've tried to online stalk her just to see what she's up to now sure and i can't find her at all so just just to just to marry her real quick just to like see where she lives and just like helicopter in yeah yeah, yeah, whatever (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so we were in um great name by the way terry wilde yeah w-y yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um and we were in daytona beach she for spring break and she was there for a photo shoot and i felt really cool because she's there for a photo shoot she felt really cool because she's there for a photo shoot we're drinking we're partying it's spring fucking break in daytona and one night a guys a bunch of guys bought her shots and um, I was just drunk and we were in love. But she was like, yeah, I'll have some shots. Thanks. Like I wasn't mature enough to be able to handle to be able to know that she can handle herself. I was in that drunk state where I was like, if you fucking talk to a dude, that's like cheating. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that kind of love, but that kind of overbearing. I'm immature. Well, kind also of shit. doing shots with a bunch of other dudes is like that. She's also sending a message. Mm. that's you know okay yeah. but but i think i could have handled it better okay yeah because yeah. you know i handled it in the way where i like stepped up to these dudes and i turn around to her i'm like what are you doing and like i'm the dude in the bar now who's making a scene and so she storms out of there and everyone's like oh how exciting right and Drama. then i storm out of there too chasing her and now we're those fucking people in daytona beach yelling through the streets while everyone's jumping on the hood of cars and throwing slurpees into the air And she runs away and I'm like, fuck, I got to do something to make this up to her. And I'm hammered. And I find a twist tie on the ground from like that you would twist up a garbage bag with. Uh And I grab the twist tie and I run after her and I run in front of her. And I was like, just give me a second. She's like, fine, whatever. And I get on one knee and I start proposing to her with a garbage twist tie in the middle of Daytona Beach on spring break. She's like no and i'm like just give me and so she's like fine yeah i mean you know because we were in love and i put a garbage twist tie on her ring finger and started twisting it and that was the closest i've been to uh marriage well how did it end mike we fucked on the beach and then we never talked about that twist tie thing okay yeah and then you oh we just broke up like (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. Like later, it was just like, you know, God. like like college is fun. It's hot and heavy and you like you do what you do and you I'm going to I'm alone. I have no parents anymore. So yeah. everybody I see, I'm like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like and you just feel fr- I felt free. Um, so, yeah, it was like a great relationship. But I'll never forget when I proposed to somebody with a garbage twist tie. Wow. Yeah, that's actually quite romantic. You find that to be romantic? I find it to be like. Pretty embarrassing now. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think it's... An, uh, I think it's actually kind of lovely. Please tell me. I think it's quite romantic. Honestly, I mean, it's obviously fucking ill-advised, and it's a really good thing you guys didn't actually, like, follow through, or, you know, she, like, hold, held your feet to the fire the next day, and, like, f- you know, it was like, I want a real one now, and you have to make it a real thing, and then you're, like, trapped in some 
horrible thing that you really didn't intend. Um, so that's good that that didn't happen. But no, she was a good person. She yeah. wouldn't do something like that. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the act of just saying like, you know, fuck it, I love you so much, and I just want to stop fighting. And here, like, let's you know be together forever is you know in its youthful kind of heady way really lovely i don't think there's anything embarrassing about it thanks mary jane yeah yeah i'm not saying that you know it's a great idea but i don't know i've never been proposed to in that kind of way with a twist tie that he found on the ground not in in florida a a spur of the moment heated like i love you so much kind of way Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like the one big proposal was because we uh, were, it was like a health insurance thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was with someone that I loved very much and the relationship just didn't end up working out and that's totally fine. But that it wasn't like a romantic thing. And I remember feeling kind of heart, like my heart sank a little bit because I was like, oh, I've always imagined this moment and I would love for it to be like a big kind of cool moment that feels like my life is changing in some way. And then the other time... Um, it was kind of scary because I was like, oh, if I say yes to this, it means like I'm, I'm taking, I'm stepping off a cliff. Yeah. So neither was particularly like romantic or cool. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I, I dream of that moment sometimes. The proposal? Where, yeah. Where everything lines up and it just feels right to do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you dream. made me feel better about yeah. it because that was one of those things for me where it's like a panic proposal. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. But I mean, you know, just the fact that that's that's there as a part of your life it's you know you've you've done it you know what that feels like that's cool that's true you know yeah yeah like as i got on i think the funniest thing is probably if you were to look at me from like um like a bystander Mm -hmm. seeing a a blackout drunk kid trying to get on one knee Uh, while talking was probably quite funny which is like hold on hold on and i'm like slowly tilting and then putting my hand down to hold the sidewalk yeah 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 i mean i find it endearing i don't know why i don't know i don't know exactly why i do but that's nice i appreciate it's because the, i know you i appreciate the warmth you know yeah yeah it's yeah i, know you. I want to hear people's proposal stories yeah i'm always into those definitely yeah i just listened to pete holmes uh album dirty clean mm-hmm. and he has a great proposal story on it it's so good he proposes in a hot air balloon oh. and it's so fucking funny yeah. Okay, it's cool. It's great. Yeah, proposal stories. Let's get Pete Holmes on this podcast, too. Fuck, yeah. Please. Just hot air balloon, putting it in the air. Just Hell saying. yeah. <laughs> What's up, Pete? Please <laughs> come on the podcast. He's a Chicago boy. Yeah. I can reach out to him. Would love that. Let's get it going. Okay. Um, What else is happening in your life? Um, I have to be up in a few hours to go back to the next concert in this series, and that's kind of my life all week. Okay, well, let's wrap it up, do some Buds of the Week so that you can get some Zs. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Um, who's your butt of the week this week? Oh, wait. I'd like to go first because it ties into Pete Holmes. Oh. Do you mind? Not at all. Okay. My butt of the week this week is another comedian who just had a great album come out. Her name is Logan Gunselman. She is so fucking funny. Um, her her The name of her album is Today's Top Hits. And look at the cover. It looks like the, um, now that's what I call music cover. Oh, hell yes. Right? Yeah. How fucking cool is that? So fucking good. Um, you... You should definitely follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram is at places I took a shit this year. She's so fucking funny. What the fuck? Yeah. So <laughs> listen to Logan's new album, Today's Top Hits. She wanted her album tracks to be like tied into like Lizzo and stuff so that it would get traction. And the record label was like, yeah, no, nah, we don't want to get fucking sued. Um, but definitely, and follow her on uh, Instagram at places I took a shit this year. She does a bunch of pranks where she makes fake product wrappers and then hides them in grocery stores oh it's so fucking good that's fucking great hell yeah who's your butt of the week this week uh my butt of the week is my friend marlene who just sent me a beautiful print that i'll take a picture of and put it on the our instagram story she's an artist who she just makes stuff that kind of comes out out of like feels like the inner reaches of her brain like she makes up creatures this is a sort of like a cat-like creature that's howling out of a window She's also an incredible caricature artist, and she's one of the few uni- unionized steel workers in New York, uh, female uh, steel workers in New York. And she's worked on uh, One World Trade Center and all sorts of other what? amazing uh, projects as as a steel worker. She has pictures of herself like walking along steel beams and welding, and yeah, she's 
just fucking neat and tough and cool and I've had a lot of fun with her uh, at you know bachelorette parties in Burning Man and I follow her as an artist online and if you want to see some weird cool art her stuff is um at Kreezamalot like Camelot but with her furs her name is Marlene Kreeza I think that's how you say it anyway K R Y Z A M E L O T damn it I've been up for 24 hours, basically. (laughs) Sorry, everyone. Sorry. I'm not going to do this to you too much, Mike. I'm sorry. but It's okay. It's been kind of neat and cool. Since we've started, we've never missed a week and we never will. I know. That's how it is. It's dope. Yeah. Yeah. So some of them will be sleepy. Some of them we won't be, but we're never going to miss one because we love fucking doing this. Yeah. That's what's up. So much. So thank you all for listening. And if you want to give us a five-star review, it's at iTunes. Click it. Leave us a review. Um, go to our Instagram, at Weed and Grub. Slide into our DMs. You just got a new Wisp pick the other day. I did. Yeah, from I've Sydney. Gotten, yeah, I've gotten a few good ones lately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're around. Say what's up to us. And we've got some really cool things coming up. So, um, oh God. No, not yet. Not oh. yet. We won't talk about them yet. But okay. um, this is a really cool year. Send nudes. Oh, yeah. That's my new thing. I want everyone to send whisk pics and nudes, meaning noodles. (laughs) Send pictures of your noodles. Bye, everyone. Bye.